Welcome to Spirits Podcast, episode 18, South African Rain Queens. Yeah, We're so excited. Oh my God, this episode's <laughs> going to be so good. You know us, we love a good, strong, matriarchal mythology. I know, Erzuli, who will my love be? <sighs> my love is destroying the patriarchy. Anyway, we would love to welcome all our new listeners again and to thank a few of you who have tweeted at us and sent us fan art. God, we love fan art. We really love fan, fan art, art guys. Is so good. We just want to plaster our walls with your fan art. It's I know. so nice. I know. And I have an apartment that's bigger than one room now, so I have even more walls to put it on. Um, so shout outs to Carolyn McGuire, Ricky Spanish, Sophia, Haley Thomas, Marty Williams, Todd Faulkner for the super, super sweet shout out on his own podcast, Brian Guevara, Moshi, and Zach Karloff Illig for the Selkie and Kelby fan art. The Selkies so had great cool, teeth. Guys. Oh my gosh, oh. I was so pumped. We're going to put it on our Facebook page, so mm-hmm. find us over there at Spirits Podcast on Facebook, on Twitter, on Patreon, all the places. If you guys love the show, please rate and review us on iTunes. It helps other people find spirits and creates more spiriters and more drunken mythology for us to share. And who wouldn't want to live in that world? Everyone does. Without further ado, enjoy Spirits Podcast episode 18, South African Rain Queens. And as you know, I'm a big comic book fan. You are. You are the biggest comic book fan. You're on a first name basis with several comic book shops. That's true. I am. I frequent a lot of comic book shops. I started reading comics when I was about eight years old. Yep. Um, My favorite comics were the comics that got me into comics were the X-Men. Yes. Do you know any X-Men, Amanda? Uh, Okay, I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Halle Berry is an X-Men. Yes, Halle Berry is an X-Men. Do you know her character's name? I think, I want to say Frosted Tips, but I know that it's in fact Storm. (laughs) Frosted Tips? She has white hair. No one have a code name called Frosted Tips. She has white hair. But anyway, moving on, moving on. There's a bald one in a wheelchair. There is Michael Fassbender. There is... It <laughs> doesn't count if you're just naming the actors. No, no, no. There's the big... Isn't there the big, like, craggly orange one? That's not an X-Men. Okay. That's the thing. That's a Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four. Ooh, good job. They're from some other franchise, I suppose. The oh, are they from Four. Marvel, but, like, they don't have the rights to yes. it? Okay, cool. Uh, like, Sony or Paramount yeah. owns them. And then there's uh, Jennifer Lawrence, who is blue. That's all I know. Okay. You actually kind of hit the nail on the head with your first one there, which I'm pretty impressed by. One of my favorite characters growing up. I can't, I can't pass up Halle Berry in a leather cat suit. So, you know. Well, okay. Um, Cat suit was a different one. She was Catwoman in one movie. No, no, I know. But she has like a blue, like very tight jumpsuit in one of them. Anyway. So her character was Storm. Yes. Storm uh, could control the weather. Yes. Rocked a mohawk for like a solid 20 years in the comics. Like a long mohawk. Yeah. Like super, super Oh, the long mohawk. Yeah. An even stronger choice than the normal mohawk and has a super interesting backstory tell me all about it so storm was born of a african woman in the comics it's she's from a fictional land called wakanda yep. which is the same country that black, black panther. panther rules yes hey. and her mother meets a photographer reporter one of those things yep. uh, he's american okay they get together they have storm nice they both die in an earthquake oh which is kind of sad but like tragic backstory obligatory for of and course. Fan. Storm is orphaned, goes, yep. wanders off into the, the wilderness. Wakandan forests. Yes. Gets brought into a village who realize she has powers. Nice. And her powers are to control the weather. That's like sort of when like an adopted child's also a piano prodigy. And you're like, wow, parents. They're like, way to, like good way choice. To, way to choose the super talented one. So Storm goes to this village. She has powers. She helps their crops grow. She makes it rain Good for guy, them. Storm. Nice. Storm's the best. They end up worshiping her as a goddess. Why would you not? Why would you well, not? Well, because she's fantastic. She flies around with the wind and brings rain. And like walked into their village like a foundling. And is 100% gorgeous when she's an adult. Obvi. But Amanda. What? Did you know that there's historical significance to Storm's backstory? Yes! Making it even better. In South Africa. Yep. There is a matriarchal queendom. Okay. Known as the Mojajis. Currently or historically? Both. Dope. They are known as the Rain Queens. And do you know why they're called Rain Queens? Uh, Do they have theology around gods that control rain? Sort of. Okay. The people who worship 
the um, rain queens yep. specifically believe that the rain queens can bring rain to their area, to their and kingdom. are the Mujaji themselves rain queens, or do they follow rain queens? No, the Mujaji are the rain queens. Amazing. So there's just some Amazing. beautiful queens that are, you know, come through time. Yep. And bring rain every season. Again, such a human tradition to to worship, to think about, to try to control the weather. I love that this is specifically, uh, you know, theologically like a woman who controls the rain because amazing. It's fantastic. Um, so the Mujaji are the queens of the, again, pronunciation is not my thing. I'm We're trying. sorry. We're trying. Balubedu. And they're the people of the Limpopo province in South Africa. Awesome. So the title is matriarchal. Um, the throne is passed down from the eldest daughter and no males can inherit the title at all. Uh, you know I like that. I know. <laughs> You're looking at me with a smile on your face, a special <laughs> smile, because I, I like that a lot. Um, so she specifically is able to control clouds and rainfall. But uh, interestingly, uh, different Mujaji have specialties in certain areas like this one's very good at mist and whatnot really and are those inherited as well or sort of like as you kind of see the up-and-coming generation like you sort of realize talents in some of them um i think it's more it's always the eldest daughter so i think it's she inherits the title genetically supposedly genetically yeah yeah she has the powers when she becomes the mujaji makes sense makes sense in the x-men universe too Mm -hmm. so the way that the lineage for the mujaji got started is is a little complicated, so bear mm-hmm. with me. It also has a little bit of incest in it, which, you know, we talked about incest in Greek mythology. We did. It's not weird. Less of a thing. Right, not a thing. And for the Mujaji, it's not like a thing that they're practicing often, but it's what gives her these special powers. And like, again, Harry Potter reference here, like there is some, you know, amount of like power concentrated in the blood, power concentrated in the lineage. Mm-hmm. And so like, again, in the Greek case, maybe in this case, you know, it, it makes a certain amount of sense to like, you know, just sort of chemically like mm-hmm. keep those things as concentrated as possible. This is like a special circumstance. Interesting. It's not something that they practice Whereas regularly. in the Greeks, it was like, like the kind of standard, like, you know, mother, father, child mm-hmm. things like th- those weren't as established. Right. But on only the for gods. the gods. Exactly. Not for mortals. Yeah. And this... here there's like special circumstances where this is practiced. Exactly. Okay. In the story, this dates back to the first Mujajis uh, dated back to the 16th century. Okay. So there's a daughter of a chieftain whose name is Zugandini. In the story, she's either impregnated by her brother or by her father. Okay. Because the gods tell the father that uh, she will gain rain-making powers, which is a coveted gift for this dry region. Right. And she will bear a child who will be the first Mujaji. Okay. And so did the, like, did the whole family sort of say, like, I guess this is what's happening now, like, post Yeah, I think the father was just like, all right, I guess, I mean, the gods right. are telling me I have to do this. This right. is what I'm going to do. Like, kind yeah. of the um, Abraham on the Mount sacrificing right, right. Isaac. Yeah. The right I, I, you're the scholar here. Probably. <laughs> um, either way, Zugandini is held responsible for the actions of her father and brother and is shunned from the village, like shitty victim blaming. Classic, you know, historical men <laughs> blaming the victim. Right. Which I guess the village probably either turned on her brother and father or either way she just was like, why didn't you stop them? That sort of thing, which is terrible and awful. Yeah. And like, I mean, I that. guess there's, you know, there's like a visible, there's visible evidence of, of the act and like that yeah. happens to be, you know, the woman's body. Yeah. Zucandini is a smart girl. Mm-hmm. Uh, she gathers gathers up followers as she leaves the village um, and establishes what would become the kingdom of Balubedu. So it's sort of like, I'm trying to think of the specific movie, but where you like, you stand up in the lunchroom and like the bullies make fun of you. And so you start walking out and everyone's like, I'm with you and like follows you out of the lunchroom. It's kind of very like, uh, I am Spartacus. Right, right. Which is cool. Only better because it's African women. Yes. (laughs) Um, So she establishes this village, She gives birth to a son who becomes like a male leader called a Mugudu. Mm Mm-hmm. As the Magudu leads, this is not a peaceful time, though. Okay. She dies. He's leading. It's not really good. There's a mm, bunch of... Sort of Prophet Muhammad situation. Yeah. So there's a bunch of rivalries between Look the different families. <laughs> um, so in order to continue the... Dynasty? Yeah. The matrilineal line. Yeah. The Magudu impregnates his own daughter... Um, like the first one. Okay. And then the daughter becomes the first Mojaji, which means ruler of the day. Nice. But is also the same term used for the rain queen. So sort of like the, the body in which the ruler 
you know, is instantiated yes. for the moment, for the for the lifetime. And so she, out of all of the line, is the first to show the rainmaking gift. So interesting. It is super, super cool. The interesting thing about this is that the line has been maintained until June 2005. Oh, God. What happened in June 2005? We'll talk about it in a second. The cliffhanger? Yes. Uh. Um, so there's a bunch of different customs that the Rain Queen kind of has to be involved in. Okay. The Rain Queen has to shun public functions and can only communicate... Like a Supreme Court justice, like the other Queen of America, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Queen. Notorious RBG. Yeah, again, like sits in the front row of the State of the Union, can't clap because they're impartial. So shun public functions, can only communicate with her people through male consulars, which is not great, but still... Like the worker bees. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I like that. I like yeah, that analogy. Yeah. They have to have a place... But it's not the highest place. <laughs> um, every November, she presides over the annual rainmaking ceremony. Cool. Post-harvest. Classic. Yes. Yeah. And just, you know, it's a ceremony where she invites the rain to the thing. Uh, there's also a whole thing with when the baby is born, if it rains that day, they're going to have like special powers versus <gasps> cool. versus like a traditional rainmaker. And wait, I guess in South Africa, that would be springtime, November. Yes. Going into yes. Win- going to summer. Which I guess it would rain more then. So that makes sense. Yeah. Or like post planting season, you know, you want the, the rain to make the earth fertile. That makes sense. The rain queen never marries. But mm-hmm. she has many wives, which, like, it's not really spouses. It's more like ladies-in-waiting or servants. Nice. Uh, they're sent from the villages in the kingdom to help serve her as sort of like a form of diplomacy, which, like, mm-hmm. announces, oh, I'm, I'm loyal to the queen. Right, Let me send right. this cute lady to go live with her. Yeah. And the, so I guess if she if she doesn't marry, and she doesn't have children, right? She does have children. She does have children. I'll explain that oh, in a second. Oh, all right. I'm going to head it myself. Okay. The rain queen maintains a lush garden. That surrounds her royal compound. Makes sense. Of it course. would be kind of suspicious if the rain queen lived in a desert. Well, it's supposed <laughs> to be a reflection of her amazing rain powers. Yeah. Actually, scientists have kind of like observed this and yeah. they believe that the compound and that part of the kingdom are built on a rain belt. Huh. So the area has active rain due to the hot air and the humidity of the region. But like, who's to say the rain queen didn't pick that region because of that? Sure. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you were an ocean queen, you would live in the ocean, right? Like you, you go to the place where you're kind of most at home and most immersed right. in the thing that is your thing. Interestingly, there's the world's largest cicade trees, which I had to like Google and look at it. They're like these big, like spindly looking trees that I don't know, look like they would grow in the desert, but grow really well. Like palm style? Sort of. style. Interestingly, so this species of tree is actually named after her. Hmm. Which is really cool. Like there's, it's the oldest tree like that in the country that they found. The individual tree. Yes. That wow. individual tree that grows on her compound. So, so they cool. gave the scientific name for it and named it after the God, I love when that happens. Isn't that awesome? love when that happens. It's so, so cool. That would be a very romantic gift, right? Yeah. Like naming a scientific thing after a loved one. Not a stars, whatever. There's... There's oh, no, uncountable star trillions cool. of them. Yeah, but like maybe it's already dead. But there's also like a thousand or millions of different kinds of like bugs and stuff. So the likelihood that you're going to be named after a bug if you're dating yeah, a scientist. Yeah, but, like, but like species on Earth are way more finite than stars in the sky. All right. I'm just saying, if I had to choose between a biologist and an astronomer to give me like a grand romantic, romantic gesture, it would definitely be like a super cute like beetle or moth that I can mount in a shadow box and put in my house. Sidebar, they just named a uh, insect after President Obama. Really? Yeah, you have to Google it. It's super, super cool. Hold on, hold on. We're Googling it. Oh my God, there's a Wikipedia page list of things named after Barack Obama. Oh my God, I'm That's so literally the name of it. There's also a list of organisms named after famous people, which is way less interesting. Yes, no. The things named after Barack Obama. Ah, there it is. Oh, it's not a insect. It is. It is a turtle parasite. Oh. Turtle parasite. That was it. Which I guess like is not super flattering. Barack Trima Obama is a newly named turtle parasite. And the scientist who discovered it is President Obama's cousin. Oh, okay, cool. Cousin, twice removed. From the, the Journal of Parasitology. Oh, cool. cool this has bro. been a fertile sidebar. <laughs> I would not like my future scientist spouse to name a flatworm after me, yeah, to be clear. Yeah, be a bit of a pain. To be clear, I want a multicellular, non-parasitic organism, please. So African culture actually has a lot of respect for the rain queen. Mm-hmm. You would think, you know... 
given the modern sensibilities that we have now, supposedly, um, you would think that we would kind of frown upon like, oh, this woman makes it rain. And scientists are like, uh, no, she doesn't. Right. Like there's a kind of modern skepticism to sort of deities and rituals that are tied to like things that we can now explain with science in some ways. Then again, we also have Groundhog's Day. So we do, we do. We. So we really are not ones to talk whatsoever. We literally forecast the seasons with the emergence of a small rodent from the ground. But interestingly, so the fifth rain queen actually maintained diplomatic relations with Nelson Mandela. Amazing. The King Shaka Zulu uh, sent emissaries to ask for her blessings. Awesome. Leaders in surrounding kingdoms attempt to avoid conflict with the region, kind of in deference of the position. Sure. Like the rain queen will probably take our rain away if we're not nice to her. Yeah, or just like, hey, this is an important function for our region and or continent, so let's not. The rain queen actually brings in a lot of tourist attraction. So much tourist attraction that the South African government offered a government civil list, um, which basically gives them a stipend paid by the government to help defray the cost of like preserving her garden. Sure. Which like, is great. I mean, a, a historical, not just a relic, but like a place of cultural and historical right. significance. Which, you know, good on the South African government for sending them money. Good decisions, y'all. In the 21st um, century, anyway. So going back to the kind of lineage of things, mm-hmm. um, in order to maintain the lineage and dynastic status of the Rain Queen, um, her council basically picks people she can mate with. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're chosen by the Royal Council. The Rain Queen is not expected to remain exclusive to these partners. Great. Uh, so long as they don't conceive a child with partners that aren't approved. I see. So does she, like, make these choices in collaboration with her council? Kinda, basically. Yeah. So, I mean, right, like, in some ways her her lineage is uh, not quite a commodity, but, like, it's an important kind of political decision. Right. And they, um, they tend to pick men who are part of the dynastic line already who have a certain yeah. amount of royalty like all within of them. politics before the 18th century. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but they maintain that just so that they can make sure that the next reign queen is right. pure and a real reign queen. Yeah. And not another orphan walking in from the jungle. <laughs> like Storm. Storm would be an awesome reign queen though. God. Or Halle Berry. <laughs> There's this kind of rumor. I, I couldn't find out if this was actually legitimate or not. Yeah. Um, but rain queens were said to know when they were near death, and so they would ingest poison through ritual suicide in order to allow the next in line to take over. Again, I'm not sure how mm-hmm. legit that is, but um, that was from like some dude, I don't know, some European who was visiting the kingdom in the early 1800s. So you know how we were talking about how the last rain queen was in 2005? Yes. So that's when she died in 2005. Okay. Um, she only served for two years. Oh. And she died when she was 27. 27! (gasps) Fuck! She was said to have the ability to control clouds and rivers. Like I said, specific rain queens have specific control over stuff. Oh, nice. So she's like cloud and river girl. She was cloud and river girl, yeah. She actually, there was a lot of controversy surrounding her death for a couple reasons. First is, she died from an undisclosed illness, Mm. um, which was later listed as meningitis. Huh. Except when she was in the hospital after she died, someone set fire to her coffin, which makes people think there's a little bit of foul play in there. Right. Yeah, like that's sketchy. Classic destroy the body before they can perform an autopsy. Mm -hmm. If CSI and uh, criminal minds have taught me anything, (laughs) it's that you dissolve the body in acid to uh, remove traces of foul play. There you go. Um, They did not do that. They decided to set it on fire, some person in the hospital saw it stopped wow. it from happening really and that's intense yeah she has two children a son and a daughter nice um Good however work. pre-27 that was a, a great life however both of these kids were fathered by a commoner who was not chosen by the royal council oh she damn. had like a boyfriend wow um, i wish she stuck around she sounds awesome Well, so she was really disliked by the royal council. Like, she didn't want to be reign queen. She didn't do the, like, hiding from public sort of thing. Um, She walked around in jeans, like, would go to the nearby disco, had a cell phone, had a boyfriend. She sounds like like the Prince Harry of South Africa, only better. She's like the modern Jasmine from Disney. 
She sounds great. Yes. Aww. But she's dead now. I'm so, I know, Julie. You don't have to rub it in. Um, so there's a lot of issues, mostly due to the fact that she didn't leave behind a viable heir. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of infighting over who will take over the throne. It's really complicated to kind of go into because there's a bunch of sure. warring factions and stuff like that. But if you're interested, you can actually Google Rain Queen Succession and there's a whole bunch uh-huh. of articles and stuff. So fascinating. There's been a recent update, but it's not super verified yet, I guess. Okay. The secession has supposedly been verified. Huh. 11-year-old Masalanabo Mojaji, because she gets the Mojaji title. Nice. Um, she'll be crowned when she's 18. She's 11 now. She will also be the first queen to be officially recognized by the South African government as royalty rather than just a figurehead. Shit. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty very cool, exciting. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, and I like that they don't, like, thrust this upon her when she's 11. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's allowed to hang out a little bit. Now, the a royal regent. council is kind of right. chilling with her for a while, yeah. and they're just going to wait until she's 18, and then they're going to crown her. I hope that's true. Yeah. That sounds fascinating. So we'll have to wait seven years. We'll we'll update you in seven years <laughs> what's up with the new uh, Episode 418, <laughs> Mujaji update. Yeah, so it's really interesting. It's a lineage that has kind of continued on over the past uh, 400, 500 years, which is fantastic yeah 500 ish yeah that's amazing i and i i love that this is a you know something that persists to the current day we'll often hear of like badass deities Mm -hmm. and you know great ceremonies that have been lost over time to conquering nations or to you know missionaries from other religions that the rest of it kind of had to die out in Mm -hmm. order to preserve the people's safety um but i i love that this still exists and that shit she's She's a, uh, you know, recognized royalty. Yeah. Now. Isn't that so cool? That is so cool. It's like a cute little 11 year old who probably can control like mist and puddles. <laughs> it's oh man. Probably adorable. That would be great if you sort of like grew over time where like at first you can kind of like stop the leaking faucet or like <laughs> bring the glass of water nearer to you. And then over time it's like, oh man, she's graduated to the, to the mist. Some legit hydrokinesis and stuff in there. Hydrokinesis. Mm-hmm. What a word. Yes. Mm, Halle Berry's mohawk. <laughs> Spirits was created by Julia Shafini and me, Amanda McLaughlin. It's edited by Eric Schneider with music by Kevin McLeod and visual design by Allison Wakeman. Subscribe to Spirits on your preferred podcast app to make sure you never miss an episode. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr at Spirits Podcast. On our Patreon page, patreon.com slash spirits podcast, you can sign up for exclusive content like behind the scenes photos, audio extras, director's commentary, blooper reels, and beautiful recipe cards with custom drink and snack pairings. If you like the show, please share with your friends and leave us a review on iTunes. It really does help. Thank you so much for listening. Till next time.